Hey everyone, welcome back to Wrath of Math. In today's video, we'll be going over how to find the mean deviation of a set of data. The mean deviation is sometimes called the mean absolute deviation or the average absolute deviation. So if you were coming here hoping to learn about those, that's what we're talking about. This is a viewer requested video. If you have any requests, be sure to leave them down in the comments. With that said, let's get into it. And here is our sample data set. And this could be data for whatever you want. We could say that this is data collected on the uh, number of pizzas that people eat in a week. And our goal, of course, is to calculate the mean absolute deviation, or just mean deviation, of this set of data. Sometimes abbreviated as MAD, just to keep things nice and short. So what is mean absolute deviation? Why would we be interested in finding such a thing? The mean absolute deviation of a set of data basically tells us how much variation there is in the data. It tells us, on average, how much the values in the data set deviate from the average of the data set. But in order to figure out how much these data points deviate from the average, we need to find the average. We could calculate the average of the data set as the mean, or median, or mode. Which of these you select will affect the rest of the process. But it seems to me that the mean is the average most commonly used. That's the one we're going to use in this video. Of course, that's why mean absolute deviation is in the title, because we're using the mean. So the first thing we need to do is calculate the mean of this data set. You might remember we do that by adding up all of the values, and then dividing that by the total number of values. So let's calculate the mean, and we'll call it x bar. So x bar is equal to 4, plus 7, plus, three, plus, zero, plus, one, plus, two, plus, two, plus 5. So we add up all of the data points, and then we divide by the total number of data points. There are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 total data points. So we divide the sum of the data points by 8. Then adding all of these values up, that gives us 24. That's getting divided by 8, and that is equal to 3. So the mean of this data set is equal to 3. Remember, we're calling the mean x bar. So now we have the mean. Remember, we're trying to find the mean absolute deviation, which tells us, on average, how much the values in this data set deviate from the mean. Now let's say we have a generic value from our data set. We'll just call it x. How do we calculate the distance between x and the mean x bar? To do that, all we have to do is take the absolute value of the difference of those two numbers. So this is the absolute value of x, our data point, minus x bar, the mean. And it tells us how far away these two values are. And of course, we could calculate this distance for each value in the data set. We could calculate how much each value deviates from the mean. The mean absolute deviation is the average of those deviation values. It's the average of how much each of these data points deviates from the mean. So to calculate that, all we have to do is find this value for all of our data points, add them all up, and then divide by the total number of data points. It's just like calculating the mean of a different set of data. And if we wanted to write that using symbols, we could write it like this. This is the generic formula for the mean absolute deviation of a data set. This character here is a capital sigma. It tells us to add up the distances between all of our data points and the mean. So we add up all of the distances, but then since we want the average distance, we have to divide by the total number of distances. We calculate a distance for each data point. So since n is the total number of data points, we just divide by n. Now let's shrink this a little bit and move it over to the side and calculate the mean absolute deviation for our example. So the mean absolute deviation is equal to the absolute value of the first data point, 4, minus the mean, 3, plus the absolute value of the next data point, 7, minus the mean, 3, plus the absolute value of the next data point, 3, minus the mean, 3, and so on. So this is the numerator. We added up the distance between each data point and the mean. And then we just divide by the total number of distances, which is the total number of data points, which we already know is 8. Let me rewrite that 8. That's kind of gross. 8. 
All right, now let's move this up one line and finish the calculation. So this is equal to the absolute value of four minus three, that's one, plus the absolute value of seven minus three, that's four, plus the absolute value of three minus three, that's zero, plus the absolute value of five minus three, and that is two. And then of course, this is getting divided by eight. So now what's this equal to? Well, adding up all the numbers in the numerator gives us 14, it's being divided by eight, and we can simplify this. Reducing by a factor of two gives us a final answer of seven fourths, or 1.75 for those of you who prefer decimals. And I'm gonna rewrite that seven too, because that was a bad seven. There we go, that's a little better, 1.75. So that's it folks, that's the mean absolute deviation. It's a measure of how much on average the values in a data set deviate from the mean. We calculate it by first finding the mean of the data set, then we add up the distance between each data point and the mean. Remember that we find distance by taking the absolute value of the difference of each data point and the mean. But then, since we want the average of those distances, we divide by n, the total number of data points, which is also the total number of distances. And then it's just straight computation all the way to the answer, 1.75 or 7 fourths in this case. If the mean absolute deviation of a data set is small, that tells us that the mean of the data set is a pretty good representation of what a typical point from that data set looks like. Because a small mean absolute deviation tells us that on average the values don't deviate much from the mean. But on the other hand, if the mean absolute deviation is large, that tells us that the mean of the data is not a very good representation of a typical data point from that set because a large mean absolute deviation tells us that on average the values deviate quite a bit from the mean. So then how do we know if a mean absolute deviation is small or large? Well oftentimes we want to find the mean absolute deviation of a data set in order to compare it to the mean absolute deviation of another data set. Then by comparing the two mean absolute deviations, you can get a better idea of which one is relatively large and which one is relatively small. So here is another data set, and I encourage you to try to find the mean absolute deviation of this data set and then compare it to the mean absolute deviation of the other data set. And let me just make this comma here a little longer. That's not a decimal point, that's a comma. So try to find the mean absolute deviation of this data set. Let me know how it goes in the comments and I'll leave the answer in the description. One last thing, people don't always use the mean for this calculation. Sometimes people want to calculate the median absolute deviation. Calculating the median absolute deviation or even the mode absolute deviation is a little bit different than this. And on top of that, there are even more ways to measure the variation in a set of data. But we'll save all of that for another lesson. For now, I hope this video helped you understand what mean absolute deviation is. Let me know in the comments if you have any questions, need anything clarified, or have any other video requests. Thank you very much for watching, I'll see you next time, and be sure to subscribe for the swankiest math videos on the internet. And a big thanks to Valo, who, upon my request, kindly gave me permission to use his music in my math lessons. Link to his music in the description.